Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to another webinar brought to you by Pilgrim as part of our Dhul Hijjah series. I'm your host, uh, Brother Adil, and uh, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all on a Tuesday evening. Now, uh, many of you have heard of Pilgrim before, but one of our flagship projects is Pilgrim Knowledge, where we're building the world's largest dedicated platform for learning about Hajj and Umrah in the English language, from courses to Q&A videos to articles, as well as webinars such as this. And for today's webinar, we have a very special speaker, uh, someone who uh, is well acquainted with Pilgrim. You may have seen him on some of the videos we've produced, and that is Ustad Shabir Hassan, who is a graduate of Islamic Sciences from Ibrahim College, a Hafid of Quran, and also the co-founder of Faith Space UK, where he teaches hundreds of students on a weekly basis. And he'll be talking to you about Hajj and why Hajj should be in your bucket list. And um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce him. So if we can have Ustad Shabir. Wa alaikum salam. So I won't take up any more of your time. Over to you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'een. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana. إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما وعملا بفضلك يا رحمن الرحيمين آمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته hope you are all doing well inshallah um, thank you so much to Pilgrim for organizing these amazing webinars during these blessed days of the Hijjah and thank you to each and every single uh, one of you as attendees for joining us on this blessed day because these are indeed blessed days of the Hijjah and uh, for really showing just a keen interest um, in this. I mean, it's not really your typical um, webinar slash, you know, course, seminar, topic, whatever you want to call it, right? It's not really your typical title that you would come across normally. Um, you know, Hajj on your bucket list. And it just shows, um, you know, you already, and it shows all of us already that, mashallah, you are all, uh, very much keen to um, fulfill this great pillar of Islam, right? Quick question before we begin, actually, uh, for those of you that are here, I'm sure a few more are going to be joining us shortly. But quick question for those of you here, there is a chat feature so you can use it. Um, but how many of you here have already been for Hajj? Can we get like a yes or a show of hands or something? If you've already been for Hajj, Let's hear it. MashaAllah, we've already got one uh, uh, yes. Alhamdulillah, that's great. MashaAllah, may Allah accept. Anyone else that have already has already been for Hajj? So, uh, wow, one that's saying, uh, I was supposed to go this year. Allahu Akbar, SubhanAllah. May Allah replace it with something better. I mean, um, oh, wow. So we have, uh, we have uh, a nice little poll that's been put in place. So thank you for that. <laughs> Makes my life easy. Uh, so, okay. Interesting. We've got one yes so far. We've got uh, seven no's. Okay, two yeses, mashallah. Soon, quite a few soons as well, inshallah. Um, very, very interesting to know. So most of you, I'm assuming, based on these results, um, have not been for Hajj. Some of you were supposed to even go this year, subhanAllah. Um, and others have already been, but maybe it's been a long time and you're yearning to return and go back again. Well, if you want to know my answer, um, you would you would probably think, well, Ustad Shabir, you're leading, uh, you know, a nice little webinar with Pilgrim on Hajj. Perhaps you've been for Hajj already. And the interesting answer is no, I haven't been for Hajj already, actually. Um, you know, it's it's been on my bucket list for some time. I just haven't been able to go, subhanAllah. Right. Um, did I do I think that, you know, has it been in my plans recently to go? Yes, it has. Um, was I close to going one year? Yes, I was. Have I yet been? No, unfortunately not. Have I been for Umrah? Yes, Alhamdulillah, I've been for Umrah. Uh, and Allah has blessed me to go for Umrah five times since 2013, between 2013 to, to this year. Uh, Allah has blessed me to go 
and, and for Umrah five times. Um, but yeah, you know, this is um, this has always been a dream of mine to go for Hajj. And this is why I feel like it's so important to deliver this, to find out exactly why it's so important. And, you know, what holds people back from going and so on. There's so many different angles and, um, you know, perspectives we can look at this from, right? So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Um, and hopefully you're all able to see the uh, presentation, the slides um, that we're going to begin with. So what we're going to be discussing is um, why Hajj should be on your bucket list. Let's start with the basic question. The basic question is, what even is a bucket list? For some of you, maybe it's the first time you've heard it, right? So the definition of a bucket list is basically a number of like achievements or a list of experiences that you would hope to accomplish during your life. You would hope to have achieved or accomplished accomplished during your lifetime right and some examples of that like the typical examples of that would be like one of you know on my bucket list is to travel through europe right so for some of you it may be i want to go and see the northern lights for some of you it's like i want to ride a hot air balloon for others it's like i want to find my life partner i want to get married and settle down i want to have kids for others it's something crazy and very audacious and something very kind of like um you know, something just really wild, right? For others, it's no, it's a bit kind of uh, a bit more stable, right? So people have bucket lists and, you know, the bucket list can, can, can change and can vary from person to person, right? So ultimately, if, to put it in simple terms, it's what is the focus that you have um, for the next, you know, it, it, you know before, you, before you definitely leave this world, but, you know, in the next 10, 15 years, like, where do you see yourself? What do you want to achieve? What do you wish to accomplish, right? Ultimately, that's what a bucket list is. What is Hajj? You know, for most of you, I don't need to tell you anyway, but just for the benefit uh, and as a reminder, inshallah, to serve as a reminder that Hajj is the fifth pillar of Islam. Um, it is the pilgrimage that is made to the holy land of Mecca. Um, it falls in Dhul Hijjah, meaning the time of Hajj itself falls in Dhul Hijjah in the days that we are currently in and as you know millions of pilgrim uh, pilgrims uh, go for the Hajj for the pilgrimage every single year um, and the numbers are only increasing now subhanAllah this year we find ourselves in a very awkward and very sad and fortunate position where it's probably going to be the smallest Hajj in a very long time like in decades this is going to be the smallest Hajj where internationally pretty much Hajj has been cancelled including here in the UK or wherever you're tuning in from most places have had to cancel because of COVID because of the coronavirus and it's going to be the smallest Hajj so subhanAllah there's so many of you that probably wanted to go this year some of you have already said you were supposed to go you booked everything but this just shows you this is all down to Allah and Hajj is really is is an invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like to go for Hajj or Umrah it's really on an invite basis you don't just get invited to go to the president's house you don't just get invited to go to the prime minister's house you don't just get invited to go to a celebrity's house just randomly yeah like you know you have to maybe be favored by that leader favored by that celebrity they may already know you from before etc etc with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately it is invite it's on an invite only basis if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deems you to be worthy that year and this is something we're going to talk about a bit later on that how do you become worthy of being invited for you know do you have to be a great sheikh you know a great pious individual who's you know on some high spiritual uh, levels or do do other people you know of of different degrees and different levels and you know different kind of backgrounds do they all get to go for hajj and umrah you know so we're going to talk about that but really, that's how we understand it. And ultimately, this year, if you really want to put things into perspective, you know, firstly, we believe in Qadr. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already preordained. He's already, you know, uh, written that this is what was going to happen. And unfortunately, for those of us that was going to go, perhaps this isn't the right time for us to go. But inshallah, we, we always are optimistic as believers. We never should be pessimistic and think there's something wrong with us, maybe. No, it's ultimately, it's a plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we believe that it washes away all sins and it, Oh, it really is, you know, um, um, it really is a transformative experience 
for go, uh, you know, going to Hajj, making this journey, making a lot of sacrifice along the way, there really is a lot of, um, you know, it's, it really is an amazing journey. And even if you go for Umrah and get a taste of that, you really feel it. It, it is a life-changing experience, right? Um, in terms of the fiqh, very quickly, who is the Hajj obligatory upon? Because even though we say that you must perform the Hajj once in a lifetime, what if you never ever meet the conditions of, you know, Hajj and it becoming obligatory upon you? Then actually you don't have to do it once in your lifetime if the conditions are never met. You may want to, but you may just never be able be able to. So obviously you have to be Muslim, you have to be an adult, like it's not expected for a child to go for Hajj, nor is it an obligation upon a child. You have to be sane, you know, you have to be of sound mind, and you have to have the means. Now, this is where there's a bit of detail that the scholars speak about. What does it mean to have the means to go for Hajj? One, for example, is good health. So if you have a long-term chronic illness and, you know, you are bedridden or whatever it might, might be, you know, in that unfortunate case, you know, you don't have to feel guilty about not going for Hajj because that obligation is lifted from you. Of course, it would be amazing if you could, but the obligation in terms of, we're talking from a fiqh point of view here, we're talking from an Islamic jurisprudence point of view here, you don't need to. Uh, safe journey. If the journey is unsafe, the obligation of Hajj is lifted. And I would say that's basically what we're faced with today, with COVID-19, uh, with, the, with the current, um, you know, with the current uh, pandemic, right? Um, it's not safe to travel right now. It's not safe to, to, to go and be in this large gathering of millions of people. It really is not safe. It would be of further detriment, if anything. And therefore, what we would say is that because of this, you know, even those who have the means right now to go and had the intention fully of booking for Hajj, really, and ultimately, that obligation has been lifted now. Okay, and also having enough provisions, right? Having the mount, having the travel, having the means, having the enough wealth and money to go. Nowadays, subhanAllah, Hajj can be quite costly, right? I mean, we're talking five, six thousand pounds. If you're trying to go from here in the UK, you could probably get it for a bit less, depending on what you're looking for. You know, the flights, the hotels, the stay, taking annual leave, all of these things. Like there's a lot to think about, right? And do you have enough money to leave behind or do you have exactly five thousand pounds? And you're leaving nothing behind for your children, for your family members. And, you know, you come back and the, your electricity is gone. And, you know, you've got all these bills coming in and, you know, all these uh, court notices. You know, this is obviously you have to have enough to leave behind and come back to something as well. That's when the obligation fully kicks in to be eligible for Hajj in terms of the obligation. Right. And this is important to understand what the fiqh, what the obligation is. Because we're going to come to now a key question that holds people back. It's not even a question, to be honest with you. It is what I would say um, uh, uh, an impediment. It's an obstacle that people themselves, they question. And the number one thing that they put on the list when it comes to going for Hajj is, I don't feel ready to go for Hajj. I don't feel worthy of going for Hajj. Even if you have the means to do, we're talking about now the, the context where you have the means to do so, right? But you are holding yourself back. You know, let's just say as an example, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to just make this example up on the spot. You have uh, someone, right? Uh, let's say his name is Khalid. Okay. And Khalid is 28 years old. Khalid has a good stable job. Khalid has enough money. He is now he, it, it, the obligation is now upon him. He can afford to go for Hajj. He's got enough wealth and everything is there. But Khalid, being a 28-year-old, he, you know, basically reflects and thinks to himself, you know what, I'm struggling with my, with my prayers. I'm struggling with my prayers, right? You know, what do I know? I'm an ignorant person. You know, I can barely wake up for Salat al-Fajr, you know, I don't have a spiritual connection with, with Allah. Who am I to go for Hajj? Who am I to ever do this? Who am I to go there? Or, you know, maybe I should go when I'm a bit older. Let me go when, when I'm a bit older. And, um, you know, perhaps uh, when I'm older, I will, I, I, yeah, you know, I'd be more ready. And, you know, when I come back, I will definitely be able to change my life. And, you know, we have this thing. Now, 
this is really this is really not a good positive way of of thinking honestly it's really dangerous it's a dangerous way of thinking let me tell you why it's a dangerous way of thinking okay it's a dangerous way of thinking because firstly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides allah decides who is worthy who is not who are you to say that you are not worthy if allah has invited you or he's given you the means sometimes again we have this wrong perception of being uh, you know uh, being uh, worthy of going or having the invite to hajj okay because or umrah for that for that matter right so sometimes what we say is well you know i haven't been invited yet and then someone asks you what do you mean you haven't been invited yet have you have you prepared to go you're like no 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 i haven't prepared to go i just i just you know, i just don't feel like allah has invited me listen the 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 world doesn't work like that okay allah has given you the means that in and of itself is a tawfiq from allah the fact that allah has given you the means that enough wealth a good job good health that is a risk my dear brother or sister that is a risk that is a provision from allah and you have to understand that there are literally if i tell you no exaggeration there are tens of millions of muslims who cry day in day out and they they don't have the opportunity to go or they probably will never ever have the opportunity to go for hajj in their lifetime and maybe not even in their children's lifetime or in their grandchildren's lifetime will any of them be able to go for hajj you know why because they're in a war torn country it's completely unsafe they are living their lives in poverty you know this is a blessing from allah if allah has blessed you who are you to now turn around and reject that blessing to repel it and to say no uh, you know i'm i'm not ready okay it doesn't work like that hajj is not reserved for the elite yeah you know you have the elite you have these great amazing people of knowledge and wisdom and you have these people of you know the awliya of allah those who are very close to allah and those who are really like taking their deen seriously hajj is not where, since when did you read that the condition of hajj is you need to be you know someone who is of a high level who is past the age of 40 50 No subhan this is not how it works this is number one i want to clarify with you all okay stop making yourself feel bad stop making yourself feel guilty over hajj in fact if allah has given you you should be rushing towards that opportunity to go for hajj or umrah it shouldn't be like let me wait until i'm perfect let me tell you one thing or let me tell you two things in fact right firstly if you are waiting to be worthy of going for hajj you're going to wait your whole life Do you really think any of us are worthy to go to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you really think any of us are worthy of being blessed with that? None of us are if you come and think about it. We are sinners. We are all sinners. We all commit daily sins. Do you think any of us are worthy? None of us are worthy. Come on, be real. None of us are really worthy to go there. So we're going to wait a lifetime to even feel worthy of going for Hajj. So firstly, to be honest with you, none of us are worthy. Yeah if Allah invites us that is Allah's favor upon us okay that is Allah's favor upon us so that's that's number one. okay and then number two is that when it comes to you know feeling ready for hajj right and meeting some sort of criteria that now is hajj let me ask you something hajj is a pillar of islam yes we all agree hajj is a pillar of islam there are four other pillars there are four other pillars now when it comes to praying your salah every day think about it when it comes to praying your salah every day okay how many of you before your dhuhr prayer before your asr prayer you sit there and you think you know what today i'm not worthy of praying uh, fajr salah today i'm not worthy of praying asr you know who am i to pray i'm a sinner who does that If you don't pray that's probably because of your you know if if any of us miss a prayer that's our own shortcomings correct right but how many of us sit there and say no no, no I'm not worthy of praying therefore I'm going to miss up prayer that's we would say you're foolish if you if if you know you have to pray if you have the knowledge you know how to pray you, and you know it's time to pray just pray forget about whether you feel worthy or not bismillah just pray inshallah just pray that allah accepts it from you and, and the obligation is lifted why are you incurring more and more sin okay what about fasting in ramadan 
how many of us every Ramadan we think to ourselves, you know, this year, Ramadan, I'm not going to fast this year because if I fast this year in Ramadan, you know, who am I? I'm a sinner anyway. After Ramadan, uh, you know, on the day of Eid, I'm going to go back to sinning anyway. You know, who am I to ever fast? No one does that, guys. Yeah, if anyone doesn't fast, maybe it's for either a, a valid reason or maybe from their own ignorance. But no one knowingly, knowingly, with ilm, with knowledge, says, I'm not going to fast because I don't feel worthy. Think about the other pillars. Why, when it comes to hajj, I get it. It is a big, big step. It's a huge thing to go for hajj. It's a blessing from Allah. But why is it when it comes to hajj, which is, again, another pillar, another obligation, do we all of a sudden feel like, no, 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 no. Let me just put that to one side. You know, the others I can do right now, but I really can't do hajj right now. It's just not the time. I don't feel ready. Why do we do that for? If we don't do it for everything else. If that's the case, if you don't, if you're so bad, you know, why don't you just miss everything else? I'm not saying you should do that. I'm saying, why, why are you doing everything else for? The fact that you are praying and you are trying and you're making an effort with everything else is a sign that inshallah you are you are ready to go for Hajj. You should go for Hajj. The obligation is there. If the obligation is there, why are you delaying? You're just incurring more sin. You're just racking up more sin. So this is really important. This is what I wanted to firstly clarify is this whole thing about not feeling ready to go for Hajj, you know, is not a good positive thing to think from, from, from the get-go. This is not a good thing. You should push yourself right and you should try whatever you can in your means to have that strong intention to go for hajj right you should have that intention to to go for hajj okay because if you think about the people that go for hajj the millions of people every year do you think that they are perfect people that are going for hajj they're not perfect we all go to hajj as sinners we all go to hajj as sinners okay so this is this is the first thing you have to understand we are all sinners the doors of uh, Allah's repentance, the doors of mercy, the doors of tawbah, they are open, they are wide open for us, inshallah. We need to go, we need to take that step, okay? And if you think about the pillars of Islam, okay, this is the way that we look at it. Let me, let me, let me put something into context for you, okay? The way that we look at the pillars of Islam, this is what we say. We, we think that the first pillar, which is the shahada, the declaration of faith, we believe that to be the, the easiest one. Then we have salah, zakat, and then we have um, you know uh, 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 fasting in the month of Ramadan. Okay, siyam, and we think you know it's. But then by the time you get to the fifth one, we think that's the hardest one. That's the one that I. It's just I can't do Hajj right now. It's just it's just I'm just not ready for it. That's the way we look at the five pillars. That the first one's the easiest. The last one's the hardest. Let me tell you something. Look at it this way. Let's work from the back to the, to, to the first one. Let's start from the fifth pillar, Hajj, and let's work it back to the Shahada. Let me tell you something. And listen, please listen closely to this. Because, because when I first realized this, it really was, really benefited me. Really was a game changer for me. Hajj, fifth pillar. How many times are we expected to go for Hajj in our lifetime? If we have the ability to go, we are only expected to go for Hajj once in our lifetime that's the obligation if you have the means to do so correct or not yes that's correct okay so hajj is a once in a lifetime thing to do okay great that, and it's a big thing and i'm not downplaying that of course not you know we all know it's a huge thing and it's a blessing okay but let me just i'll come back to my point let me just go go to the fourth pillar now the fourth pillar is what is known as fasting in the month of ramadan okay so yeah how often do we have to fast in the month of Ramadan? No, so, so we have to do that once a year for basically a month in the year. Yeah, so we have to do that for uh, one month in the whole year out of the 12 months of the year. One month we have to fast for the sake of Allah. Okay, great. Let's move on to zakat now. Let's move on to zakat, third pillar. Okay, zakat, how often do you have to give zakat? You know, you two point five percent of your of your wealth. How, how how often do you have to give that? Once a year, once a year you give zakat, but it's not for a month. It's just one off again, once in the year. Okay, so khalas, that's fine. So you're giving your you're giving your uh, zakat. 
Okay, great. Um, that's fine. How about your the second one, your salah? How about your salah? Okay, your salah is not once a year. It's not one whole month of the year. It's every day. Yeah, five times a day. So it's not 24-7. It's at certain points of the, of the day. Five times a day, your salah. Great. Now the shahada, the declaration of faith, that you believe in Allah, you believe in the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. How often do you think you do that? We think that that's a one-off thing. You say it and you're Muslim and that's it, you're done. The shahada, in fact, is 24-7. You have to live your life as a Muslim 24-7. You have to abide by Allah's law 24-7. You have to follow the example of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi 24-7. I would argue that the shahada, the first pillar of Islam, there's a reason why it's the first pillar, because that's the hardest one. And I would even go, go as far as to argue that Hajj is the easiest one because we're only expected to do it once in our whole lifetime. If you live for 50, 60 years, you only got to do it once in your lifetime. But if you live for even 25 years, you have to do every day of those 25 years, living your life according to the Shahada. Does that make sense, everybody? And again, I'm not, I didn't just explain this to you to, to downplay the significance of Hajj. Hajj is super important. It's very important, but it shouldn't be an obstacle for us. We shouldn't see it as something that we just can't do and we should be fearful of. No, it's a positive thing. Get it done. Bismillah. But everything else, Ramadan is coming every year. Zakat is coming once a year. Salah is coming every day. Shahada is coming every day, 24-7. That is the most important thing right now. So to have this purity kind of complex that I have to be absolutely pure to go for Hajj. That's impossible, guys. You know, we no one is that pure that they're so ready. What if Allah forbid you delay your hajj and you're waiting for that pure moment and then Allah takes away your wealth? Allah takes away your health. What if that happens and now you're in a position that you can't even go anymore because you delayed it? Think about it like this, right? This is, if Allah has given you the means, we shouldn't stop ourselves and we shouldn't be like, well, you know, I'm not ready uh, to go for hajj. I don't feel ready at all. Right, so I know I can see the questions and many of you are asking the similar questions, which is, how do you know you're ready to go for Hajj? When do you know that your thing is strong enough? So I've answered that. It's not about when you're ready. Allah has told you you're ready if you have the means to go. The moment you become, the moment you become, you know, someone who has enough wealth and all of these things, the scholars say, hasten now, as soon as possible, you need to fulfill your obligation. So... You need to plan for the following year or the year after, like at ASAP, you need to do it. So it's not about, you know, feeling ready. Like I said, when Salah time comes, you don't ask yourself if you feel ready. When it's time to give Zakat, when the one year anniversary comes, you don't ask if I'm if I'm ready. Other things that are not an obligation or not as thing, marriage, you can ask yourself, am I ready to get married? You can ask that. You can ask yourself, am I ready to, to, to move out of my house? Maybe. You can ask yourself, am I ready to, you know, move to a different town. But when it comes to Hajj, it's not about just, am I ready or not? It's, that's not, that's not what's, that's not the case. If Allah has given you the means, you need to go. You need to go. And you need to just trust the process. The process of Hajj itself is an amazing, life-changing experience. Because think about it, from the very get-go, from the get-go, what are you doing? You are putting on the ihram. What is that a sign of you putting on the ihram? That is the same kind of cloth that you are going to be shrouded with when you are buried. It's a sign when you go there that no matter where you are from, whether you're from West Africa, whether you are from Europe, whether you are from the Arabian Peninsula, whether you are from the uh, uh, whether you are from the Middle East, it doesn't matter where you are from. Okay, you are all one now. You're wearing the same, you are in the same state, you are in the same place, worshipping the same Lord, facing the same Kaaba. It doesn't matter, right? So this is a sign from the get-go. It's a purification journey. It's a humbling journey. It reminds you of the afterlife. It reminds you of the Day of Judgment, subhanAllah. On the Day of Arafah, when everyone's gathered, that's what's going to happen on the Day of Judgment. It's going to be a very hot day. Everybody's going to be gathered and you're literally waiting your turn. This is what Hajj is all about. And it's a humbling journey. And trust me, when you go for Hajj, even if you feel like you're not ready, when you go for Hajj, when you go for Umrah, when you finally get it done, you will walk away with something. I'm not saying 
it's going to change everything. And this is something else. The final point I'm going to make on this point, the final thing I'm going to say is don't expect that the Hajj and Umrah is going to like, you're going to come back and before you went, you know, you are not praying any salah and you are not doing anything and you're going to come back and everything is going to fall in place for you. You've got to make some effort, guys. It's not one you know, journey that lasts for like two weeks that's going to change your whole life. It can. It has done for some people, no doubt. But don't have this expectation that my life is going to be figured out just going for Hajj. No, you've got to make your small baby steps before that. You've got to make the effort to wake up for Fajr. You've got to make the effort to fast. You've got to make the effort to control your anger. Hajj is a, is a journey, is an experience, no doubt. But you can't have this expectation that it's going to change everything for you. Because many people come back maybe disappointed even. Many people go there and they sin even while they're there. You think this is impossible? You think this is like uh, unheard of? Trust me, it, you know, like I said, I've been for Umrah five times, right? For those of you that have been for Hajj and Umrah already, you would know when you go there, it's not uh, the perfect place. It's you, you, the state of your heart. That is what's going to take you forward. Not... The Kaaba itself is not going to help you guys. The Kaaba itself is not going to change everything for you, right? Where, you know, when you woke up in the morning, you were an arrogant person and you looked at the Kaaba and it just took everything away. It's a process, guys. You've got to work for it. Nothing comes easy in life, okay? You've got to humble yourself. You've got to submit yourself to Allah. You've got to work for it, okay? So that's the last thing that I wanted to say under this point is don't have this expectation that everything's going to change. Have the expectation, look, I'm going because it's an obligation. I need to fulfill this. I'm doing this for the sake of Allah. Inshallah, I, I, I know that this is going to be a life-changing experience for me, but I'm going to keep working. It's not about just the hajj. Even when I come back from hajj, I'm going to keep trying my best. That's the main mindset. That's the intention um, that we should have uh, basically going forward, right? So... Um, the preparation for Hajj that we should make, and by the way, you know, this preparation that I'm giving you, it's not for people who are going for Hajj, literally. I'm talking about anybody that's even thinking of going for Hajj. Even if you're desiring going for Hajj, you need to prepare from now. Even if you don't have enough money, guys, even if you don't have enough money, etc. Okay. Um, it, that, you know, I'm not talking, I'm not talking about any of these things, right? I'm not talking about you've already booked your tickets and now start preparing. Preparation for Hajj comes way before, way before you've even booked your tickets, way before you've even got the the money to go. We should all be preparing for Hajj even if we think I'm not going to be able to go for the next 10 years. It doesn't matter. You should prepare. Prepare yourself for it, right? Um, So spiritual preparation, mental preparation, physical preparation, spiritually, how much dua have you made to go for Hajj? How much knowledge have you built about the Hajj? Mentally, have you planned it out in your head? How much do I need to save? Let me do some research, right? Am I mentally prepared for the Hajj? Am I ready to take on this journey? You know, I, I have my anger management issues. What if I go there and I, sna- I snap? No, let me let me overcome this from now. You know, how much annual leave do I have in the year? Have I taken it all up to go on holiday to Dubai? Have I taken it all up to go on a holiday to 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 Spain? To, to you know this this part of the world oh I don't have enough annual leave left oh no I can't go for Hajj now you should have thought about that before my friend you can't you know use that as an excuse I had 28 days annual leave but I've only got 8 days left now because 20 days I spent in Dubai and now I don't have enough for Hajj oh no what should I do why didn't you think of that before mentally think forward think ahead physically how's my health Am I, you know, when I book my tickets for Hajj, now am I going to think, oh, I'm actually quite unfit. No, this, we're, we're, as Muslims, we're supposed to keep on top of things. What's my diet like? You know, all of these things is mental, spiritual, uh, physical preparation for Hajj. You should always keep in mind. Okay. Uh, so these are really important points that you should constantly be preparing for Hajj from now. The last thing that we're going to cover is the most important section. The last section that we're going to cover is the most important section. And that is going to be about the practical steps that all of us can take. Whether we have been for Hajj, whether we haven't yet gone, whether we're going to go soon, whether we don't think we can go for a long time. What can we do practically to get Hajj onto our bucket list to move forward with the Hajj? Okay, this is a really important section that that is going to be the most important part, the uh, the most crucial part, inshallah. We are going to continue 
Um, and uh, we're going to come back to what I was speaking about um, in terms of the preparation for Hajj was the last thing that we spoke about. And right now, the last thing that I want to go through, like I said, is the most important section, the most important section, uh, which is um, which is the uh, final practical steps. OK, so the practical steps for Hajj and Umrah, if you haven't yet been or even if you've already been, is the following. Number one, spiritually, make lots of dua to be invited. Now, I've come across a lot of people who say to me, I really want to go for Hajj and Umrah. And the first question that I ask them is, when was the last time you made dua to be invited? When was the last time you made dua that you want to go? And they say, uh, you know, I, I've made dua definitely, but it's, it's not really on the top of my dua list. No, if you want to go, you should beg Allah to go. Literally, if you want a job, if you want to get married, right, you would be making dua every single day after every salah. Ya Allah, please get me that job. Ya Allah, please give me success. That's probably what you'd be doing, right? How bad do you want to go for Hajj and Umrah? When was the last time you made dua for it? Yes, you're probably saving up and all of that. But remember, ultimately we said it's an invite from Allah. When was the last time you woke up in the middle of the night and you asked Allah, Ya Allah, please take me to the blessed land. Ya Allah, please invite, invite me for Hajj and Umrah. Ya Allah, please take me there. When was the last time you did that? If the answer is I haven't done that or I rarely do that, then that needs to change. If the answer is yes, alhamdulillah, I do that, brilliant, no problem. But honestly speaking, this has to be at the top of your list. Continuously make dua, Ya Allah, take me there. Ya Allah, I want to go to Medina so I can convey my greetings, my salam to our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is key. So make lots of dua and don't underestimate the power of your dua because trust me, I've heard some amazing stories where you know, a person's dua has just changed everything. You know, the famous story, uh, the brothers um, will, will laugh at me telling this story because it's been told so many times. But it's like the story of uh, the brother Naeem Raza, right? I don't know if this has really been told in one of the webinars, but uh, brother Naeem Raza, you probably have seen him on like, you know, presenting on TV or at an event. Mashallah, very active brother involved in charity. And his story is that literally... One day he's walking um, and uh, he comes across, you know, I might not be telling this story exact to the to the to the to the T uh, or detail because, you know, um, I heard it directly from him. Right. So I've got the Sanad, the chain of narration I heard directly from Naeem Raza. OK, so Alhamdulillah, that, that's there at least. So anyway, so he he basically said that once he was he was walking, he comes across this auntie, this, you know, uh, this this Muslim woman, auntie uh, who's a bit old. And she was struggling, I think, with her shopping or carrying bags, etc. So uh, Brother Na'i basically helped, help, helped her out. Okay, it was a small thing. He never really thought much of it. And she made dua for him and said, you know, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes you to, you know, hajj. Literally, like, it, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites you for hajj continuously, right? And he didn't think much of that dua. And guess what? He said that, you know, that year he went for hajj. The following year he went for Hajj. And then the following year he had the opportunity to go for Hajj again. And subhanAllah, I think till today it's been like nearly 20 years or more than 20 years. Every year he's gone for Hajj in a row. Every year he's gone for Hajj in a row, guys. Because of the dua that this one auntie made for him. It wasn't even his own dua. It was a dua that an auntie made for him and he went for Hajj for years. I was just speaking uh, to uh, a dear sheikh of ours, Sheikh Mishkat. Okay, may Allah bless him. Sheikh Mishkat, uh, he is uh, he is one of the key uh, members of Hassan uh, Travels, right? And he was telling me that because this year internationally Hajj is cancelled, because Hajj is cancelled this year internationally, so normally he goes every year. He said, because you know if you go for Hajj, you don't celebrate Eid, yeah? If, if For those of you that have been or for those of you who know, if you go for Hajj, you don't celebrate the day of Eid, you know, the way that we celebrate and we have food and stuff. Because the day of Eid in Hajj, Yawm al-Nahar, the 10th of the Hijjah, is still a key day of Hajj. Like you're not worried about celebrating, you're going and, you, and you've got different rites to fulfill. Okay, so he said, Wallahi, he said to me, he said, Wallahi bro, I don't know what Eid feels like. Because he said that for 21 years, for the last 21 years, I've been in Hajj. 21 years in a row he's been going for Hajj. And this is the first time ever because of COVID. 
he's not been able to go for Hajj. He has to actually celebrate Eid. He goes, I'm not even looking forward to Eid, not in a bad way. He said, because normally I'm in Hajj. And for the first time in 21 years, I'm not going for Hajj. It's a weird feeling. And I was like, wow, subhanAllah, like that is crazy. And do you know why? It's because of his du'as, because of the du'as of his mother and father. That's why he's been able to go. Okay, not all of us are going to be blessed to go 20 years in a row like Brother Naeem or, or for Sheikh Mishka. These are people that we know. They're from the UK. They're local brothers I'm talking about, yeah? This, this isn't some dream thing that I'm telling you. Some rich people that can afford to go. Trust me, I know millionaires that have never been for Hajj. I literally know multi-millionaires. They have enough money to go for Hajj and have the 10-star experience, forget 5-star, and pay for all of their family. But guess what? They have never been for Hajj. Do you know why? Because A, they haven't been pushing themselves to go. They haven't made dua. They keep making excuses. B, ultimate, Allah has not invited them. It doesn't matter if you're a millionaire or not. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. If Allah invites you, it will happen, guys. You're going to make dua for it. These are just some stories I've told you. Okay, let's move on. Work on your connection with Allah from now. Don't think that Hajj is going to change everything. It's going to put everything in place and that's it. That's the end of that. You know, that or don't put Hajj off for when you're older. Inshallah, when I have a white beard, you know, then that's when I'm going to go for Hajj. No, guys, you don't need to wait till you're old. Why wait till you're old? Because A, there's no guarantee. That's the first thing. And B, what if, like I said, you don't have the means to go for Hajj by then? Anything can happen in life, right? So, work, you know, work on your connection with Allah from now. Try to better yourself from now. Your salah, your charity, your personal qualities and morals and character, all of it from now. On a practical level, do you have a separate fund or saving pot for Hajj? This is a question. Do you have this already? Do you have a separate saving pot? Or are you just saying, yeah, yeah, I, I'll save up. I've got enough money. No, have a separate pot, a hajj pot, an umrah fund pot, not umrah fund, but umrah pot, saving pot or, uh, or, or something, right? Uh, you know, where specifically that money that you're putting aside, £10 a month is going towards hajj. That may take you a long, long time. It may take you decades to get enough money. But guess what? Eventually, inshallah, one day you'll have enough. Are you doing that? Again, if the answer is no, you need to start doing that. You need to, from today, don't wait until next year or something. From today, tomorrow, say, you know what? I'm going to start putting £10 aside. Instead of spending here and there on this coffee and that drink and this, that, I'm going to put it towards my hajj, my umrah, inshallah. Because if I start, even if by the end of the year, I only have £100 in there, and that's a long way off ever being able to go for hajj, that's £100 closer to me going than I never would have had. Do it from now, Okay. I would also say one of my key pieces of advice would be if you have enough money, go for Umrah. Okay, if it's going to affect you going for Hajj, like you know, you're, you're trying to save up for Hajj, then okay, fair enough. But if you have enough money to go for Umrah, because Umrah is, is far cheaper, right? It's a lot more cheaper and a lot more affordable. Okay, go for Umrah because I promise you, going for Umrah, though it's not uh, the obligation like it is for Hajj, but Umrah is just amazing and it will only build your love and appetite to go back again and again and again, especially for Hajj. And I, I, I genuinely like, you know, you will feel more ready and more prepared than ever if you go for, if you go for, if you go for Umrah. So look, you know, mashallah, we've had, uh, you know, we've had um, uh, uh, brother Ahmed who's basically saying he took this advice and, you know, he's been able to go for, 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 um, uh, he's, he's been able to take some of these points on board. And he's got enough to go for Hajj. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, you know, reward him for his efforts. And all of us can do that. We just need to put something aside, right? And even if we can go for Umrah, like I said, jump on board, right? Jump on board. Even if it's not the five-star Umrah, you know, Hajj is supposed to be a bit difficult. It's not always going to be the five-star AC luxury. It's about the struggle. Think about how 100 years ago, right? I heard stories from, you know, uh, from from like, you know, um, uh, uh, grandparents and so on, right? That have told me the the struggles that people went through to go for to go for Hajj. Wow, can you imagine that? Like they used to go by ship to Hajj. They used to jump on a ship and used to take them months to get there. And what do we do today? We jump on a plane, six hours, we're there. 
in a comfortable flight, right? Subhanallah, Allah has made it easy for us, but we're making it difficult for ourselves. Yeah? So think about this. Just before I finish off, mashallah, we're on 240 pounds. Uh, in t you know, you, you, you all uh, responded uh, in an amazing mashallah manner. We've only got 10 pounds, apparently, I've been told, to get to 250 pounds. If we get 250 pounds, it's going to be matched and we're going to get 500 pounds. So can we get one more click, inshallah, or more clicks than that to donate that 10 pounds? Please, if you do that, we can get 500 and all of you get that reward. Bismillah. And, and I'm confident in the next minute or two, we're going to get a notification to say, alhamdulillah, done. So let me carry on while we wait for that notification. Um, look at, this is, this is really practical. Look at the Hajj dates from now and plan around it. I'm being serious. If you go on Google and you type in Hajj 2023, it will give you a rough date. It's not going to be exactly on that date, but um, it will be roughly around then. You know, uh, Generally speaking, it's pretty accurate. If you literally type in Hajj 2030, you'll probably get the dates from now. So what you should start doing is think to yourself, right, if I can maybe save up in the next two years, let me check what Hajj 2022 is looking like. Oh, so Hajj 2022, it's going to be a, at, you know, at the beginning of July. Okay, that's interesting because, you know, uh, maybe I've got summer holidays towards the end of July. Okay, so, you know, from now, you need to basically start doing it. So mashallah, someone's already checked and it says Monday, June uh, 26, right? So, you know, there you go. You can literally check and it tells you end of June. And Hajj is getting earlier, as you know, in the year. So it's moving away from, it's going to move away from the summer, summer season. And it's going to go into, you know, May, June time, right? So it's going to be maybe a bit cooler, etc. So look, in terms of Hajj dates, booking annual leave, there's no, there should be no more excuses when it comes to that. There should be no more excuses when it comes to booking annual leave because you can literally get it, right? Subhanallah, um, uh, one of one of uh, our attendees is telling us how um, her great grandfather uh, went on Hajj by walking and never came back. This is what they heard from their grandmother. Subhanallah, think about that. They went walking and and never made it back. This is, you know, firstly, may Allah subhanahu wa taala you know, bless your great grandfather and elevate his status in the hereafter. And may he allow you to be, um, you know, a means of legacy and continue his, his great work. Amin, Ya Rab. Um, but this is not, again, unheard of. This is not uh, uh, completely, you know, just a strange thing. This is common because of the struggles. Like I said, only a few decades back, things were very different to the comfort that we have today. Make a strong intention. My last point, have a strong intention going forward. Not a, you know, uh, an inshallah intention, right? You know, uh, was it yesterday or the day before I was speaking to my students and I said to them, because we finished our year, basically we have this academic year. It finishes, as you know, end of July and then we restart in uh, in, in September. Yeah. So uh, I, I asked them, who's coming back next year for, for, the, for the, the next you know, the year of studies. And all of them were like, yeah, inshallah, Ustad. And I was like, huh? I was like, what do you mean inshallah? Yes or no? You do know that inshallah could mean yes or no. You could That could mean inshallah, if Allah wills, yes, I will be there. Or it could mean inshallah, if Allah wills, I will not be there. I said, you've got to add something to it. You know, inshallah, yes or inshallah, no. Right? And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Inshallah, yeah, yeah, we'll be there. Right. So with Hajj, you can't just be like, uh, my brother, my sister, are you, are you, are you planning to go for Hajj? Yeah, yeah, inshallah. What does that even mean? Say, yeah, inshallah, like definitely inshallah. Like I am, I am ready for it. I'm going for it. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. Right. So, you know, you got to have a strong intention to go for Hajj. It can't be this, you know, thing at the back of your mind. I want to go on holiday to Turkey to go to Aya Sophia because Aya Sophia is a new masjid now. You know, I want to go to Turkey on holiday. Uh, I want to go to, you know, Istanbul. I want to go to, um, you know, Spain. I want to go to Cordoba. I want to go to Malaysia. Uh, definitely, I need a break, you know. I need that holiday. Hajj. Oh, oh, Hajj. Yeah, yeah, That that's coming. Don't worry. I'm saving up for it. If you've got, you know, a thousand pounds to spend on a, 
big fat holiday for your whole family at a holiday resort. Come on, guys, let's be real. I'm not telling you it's haram to go on holidays. We all need holidays, bismillah, when it's safe to do so again. I'm, I'm sure we're all going to be going on holiday. We need it, right? But, um, you know, when it comes to hajj and umrah, we need to prioritize. That itself is almost, it is a holiday. Like, not that it's not the same type of holiday. We're going to be sitting on a beach all day, right? Um, but it is a break, if I'm honest with you. Like, there is no better place that I've been to. I haven't traveled like much extensively, if I'm honest with you, right? But compared to your Turkey, your Indonesia, your Malaysia, Bosnia, these places that I've been to, Hajj and Umrah, Allahu Akbar, there's nothing close to it. And and the, the 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 time that I've spent there, it's just been it's just been amazing, subhanAllah. So these are just some some practical steps. And alhamdulillah, we've been given the good news that uh, it's jumped up from 240 pounds to mashallah 265 pounds. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. Um it's 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 gone up and you know you should if you, you should continue donating, inshallah. Um because you know. This is a great cause, mashallah, tabarakallah. So I wanted to I wanted to give you these final practical steps. And this is really a reminder for myself, like I said, that I still am desiring to go for hajj, but it's something that I'm trying to do and I'm trying to achieve as, as soon as possible, inshallah. Um, and we shouldn't make excuses. We shouldn't put it off, right? There's all of these things we should, we should definitely um, bear in mind. Um, alhamdulillah with that being said this is the main thing that I wanted to share with you today um, you can follow us and keep up to date on social media um, inshallah any queries any questions anything that you have you can definitely contact us there um, but I really hope that you've enjoyed this short uh, webinar and I know I can see in the comments there's so many of you saying I really want to go and one last thing I'm going to add by the way is if you don't feel a connection going there one thing I would say is you know what you should do Tune on to tune into things like you know Haramain, right? Tune into Haramain. Go on YouTube, type in uh, you know live prayers from Mecca, live prayers from Medina, and just sit back and, and just enjoy, enjoy the enjoy the recitation, enjoy the view of the Kaaba, okay? And I promise you, doing even something as small as that, watching it on YouTube, that will only fuel your desire to go for Hajj and Umrah. I promise you that much. It will fuel your desire. To go for Hajj and Umrah, if you watch and if you listen to the recitation, you know that 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 recitation. By the way, you will never hear a better recitation than that. You will never hear a better recitation when you go for Hajj and Umrah and you hear that you know Sheikh Bandar Badila, Sheikh Sudais reciting Allahu Akbar and then reciting nothing better than that. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. I will end with this to um, to 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 give us the opportunity, Ya Rab, to visit. The, the holy land we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to invite us um, to, to the blessed lands we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to go and to build that connection with him and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward us in these blessed days of the hijjah ameen ya rabbil alameen I'm going to quickly pass it over to um, uh, brother Adil and don't don't go just yet because we've got some important announcements uh, for Jazakallah khair Jazakallah khair Ustad Shabir you know, may Allah allow us all to visit his house and perform Umrah and Hajj many times over